Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Ronik and Shin, the Kyoto Disturbance Art episode number 3 reaction. So, the previous episode, um, uh, a few things happened. First and foremost, Aoshi is back. She, he comes to try to take revenge on Kenshin, doesn't find him. And Saito was also there, so thankfully he isn't able, he, he doesn't really do anything to um, Megumi. But um, yeah, like he now knows that he's in Kyoto. So he's like, I'll be waiting here. But then Shishio's people come and starts harassing him. And later on, it seems like because, you know, like Shishio riled him up. He is now like going to go to Kyoto. So that's something that happened. Also, Kenshin met with a girl. Her name was, I forgot, Misao or Misato, something like that. And she turns out she knew uh, Aoshi from her childhood. Aoshi is like, like, you know, like a parental big brother figure to her. Um, and uh, she respects him very much. And uh, she's trying to find him. However, Kenshin didn't realize that up until the very end. Which is when he reacted, he's like, oh, Aoshi? And that is where, you know, it kind of ended. So let's see what happens if, uh, you know, like the truth is revealed, how that girl will react to Kenshin. And uh, if, if, if she gets to know that Kenshin knows him, how she'll react, whether she'll... Because, you know, like he's, he's kind of <laughs> trying to take revenge on Kenshin. I wonder what the girl will feel about that. So let's wait and see. Um, yeah, let's get started with this episode. Uh, I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Think it whichever is a preference and let's begin. Okay, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Oh, here we go. Oh god. Oh mono. This is not good. Okay, hopefully, I don't know, like, I think he'll either keep quiet or probably tell the truth, because I don't think, I think he'll keep quiet, because how can he tell her that, oh, they're all gone? <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. The abandoned village. Wow, this is... Okay, so he probably didn't tell her anything. Yup. Hmm. Shrimp. Wow. Violet of the... Oh boy. No. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh boy. Well, she's just going to follow him now, I guess. He, he's not sweating at all. It's just, what the hell is this? Damn, that was too realistic. But what will you even tell her? 
Okay, Misao, that's her name. Mm. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> she's gonna run. Well, if he actually tried, yeah, he'd be able to easily lose her. Yeah, you're just... Why are you wasting time standing down here? <laughs> and giving a <us> speech? <laughs> well... Damn. Yeah, she's used to it. Well, oh, damn, yo. Oh, oh, who's there? Oh, oh, damn. That's why he's just standing there. Right. Okay, that's a big, big, uh, yeah. Oh, Lord. I think she's going to jump. Oh, no. Oh, I don't think that'll work. Yup. Oh, damn. Yeah, she, he's thinking of Charles. Um, oh well, I don't think she'll agree to that. Neither would Kaoru. She's gonna jump, I think. She's not going away. She's going to. She's getting ready for jumping. Yeah, she's. I think so. Or is she actually going? Yeah, she was taking a wind up to jump. Oh, she actually reached. Oh, no, no, a little bit. Oh, God. Ah, oh, my God. Okay, I thought he broke his leg or something. <laughs> Oh boy. Hmm. Oh boy. Hmm. Yeah. Keep your distance. Okay. Hmm. 
What is it Sanosuke? Oh, it's raining. All those trees. What have, Why do they have to suffer? I'm just saying, why do the trees have to suffer? Oh my god. Oh boy. <laughs> right. What the? Oh, that's a. Oh, damn. That's a magnet. Compass. He's lost, I think. <laughs> He's like, well, I was just following directions and I'm suddenly in the forest. <laughs> what the hell? Is that camphor? Uh. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I think she'd probably go on the journey. You know. Oh, is this where Kaoru? Yeah, and Yaiko. <laughs> Seasick. Well, and I think this is the first time they're, you know, like on a boat. No! Hmm. Yeah, you're gonna bother me throughout my journey. Oh my god. <laughs> Didn't he tell her to keep a distance? So that the others don't... No, his enemies. Oh, or that, okay. <laughs> What's that? Chip biscuit. Yeah, I do, I don't think he needs food. <laughs> hmm. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, even more now that, you know. <laughs> I'm just leaving. True. Oh, he's helping so that Kaoru can walk. So it doesn't bother her. Okay. Yeah, he can easily. 
It can just disappear in a second. <laughs> Chip biscuit. <laughs> Just one. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> oh, something's someone's here. Ooh. Oh my god. Or maybe some wild animal or something, I don't know. No, it, it, this seems like... Wait, oh, I think it's like a... What the? What the hell? Who? Someone must have been here. Oh my god, oh. Oh my god, ugh, this... Yep, they're harassing people everywhere, I guess. Shingetsu village. So wait, Shishu has been bothering them for two years? Yeah. Oh boy. Oh, yeah, this is the first time um, Miss out. also heard that, I guess. <clears throat> wow, so they're doing this for two years. Kill the new guy. Wow. Yeah, I doubt that. Wow, they completely deleted that village from even their maps. Tenkaku. No, yeah. She isn't really ready to fight like actual, like proper enemies, I think. Like, she can fight well, but that does, she doesn't have that experience. But I guess she'll have to, if uh, she's following Kenshin on this journey, she'll have to learn, I guess. Yeah. Oh, Shisho himself comes here every six months.
Oh, he's here. Oh, damn. Okay. Oh, boy. Oh my god, ugh. Oh, are, they, are those her, his parents? Oh no, yeah, it's his parents. Oh, oh, what the? How many people are here? Oh, that's not Senkaku. Okay, I was thinking like he looks different than his silhouette. Bro. Oh. Oh my god. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I'm oh, going to the hospital. <laughs> Damn. Oh god. Is that all you can say? What the hell? Who was that? Oh, Saito? Is that Saito? Yep. Oh, so he's here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Damn, Saito's everywhere. Like, you see him... <laughs> Back in the, you know, like, in the place, and then he suddenly is here, I guess. Yeah, I guess after, like, dealing with uh, Aoshi's situation, he immediately left, I'm guessing. And, yeah, now he's here. Hmm. And that was today's episode. All right. So today we had um, Misao. Yeah, that was her name. Joining Kenshin on his journey. Kenshin tried to like you know just shake her off multiple times. Even like you know like jumping over that big like um, that that the ravine that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, Misao was like, nope. I'm going to you know like follow him. And as Misao says that you know you're like you're you're just being selfish like you're 
saying that oh like staying back is going to be for their safety and everything but who would be happy you know like in a situation like that you know can't you just put yourself in their shoes and understand how it would feel to just stay and wait like that that's not happiness so yeah which is true this this um this is true for obviously her and um Kaoru as well um right so you know that that part and uh, also we're seeing how like everyone is like on their own way towards kyoto for example sanosuke is just in the forest lost at trying to find his way towards you know like his destination Kaoru and yahiko are on the uh, ship uh towards kyoto it seems like megumi might I'm not really sure, but it seems like she might join them. Like, I don't know. I still think that she'll, or, or maybe she'll just stay there. Because, you know, who knows? For now, she's there, but I think she's going to, you know, like quickly follow them. But what I'm thinking is like, up until now, I was thinking like maybe when, like, you know, Saito is going to go, like Megumi will join Saito uh, on the journey and go along with him or something. But Saito's here, you know, as we saw. So I'm the one thing I'm thinking, like maybe then, then uh, you know, like Megumi will just stay there. He'll, he'll, she'll never, you know, join the journey. But you know, the thing that's throwing me off is the fact that in the opening, the literally show, Me Megumi is on together with them on the journey towards Kyoto. So you know, maybe like you know, that's just something they decided to add. But you know what? We'll see. But I still think Megumi will join them. You know, even if late, she'll probably go. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. For now, it seems like she's n not really, you know, like she's just, like, <laughs> very distracted. And, you know, like, the, the doctor who's, like, you know, with her, he's, like, very concerned about, like, you know, her situation. Um, right. And then we have the final section where we get to see Shishio's men, you know, being a nuisance. You know, in a village, and we are here in this village, which has completely been deleted. Like that is crazy. Like you know that, like the way they showed that, they were like, oh, like yeah, they've completely forgotten about us. Like they literally, their official maps, they've completely erased the village from there. It's like it's a gone, like it's a gone thing for them. Like you know, up until now, they just sent like oh, like uh, one or two police officers. And then they even stop sending them and just abandon them. So it's never going to happen. They're either going to continue like this forever or, you know, like, yeah, everyone will, like, die in that village. Um, so it's, it's just, there's no reason for waiting for help to come because no help is going to come. Um, right. So that is crazy. Like, you know. Uh, anyways, Senkaku, that's the name of this guy who's in um, charge of this village. And wait, so she says over oh, that thing, where's that part? <laughs> Where they say that Shishu is there? Um, yeah. Uh, every, okay, every six months, Shishu always comes to the village and stays in for a week. So Senkaku's there to, you know, like entertain him for now in the mansion. So, so Shishu is here currently. That is, hmm. So, are we going to confront Shishu already? Like, I don't know. I think like I, I think it's a bit too early, isn't it, to confront him? But we'll see. Uh, but obviously, I, I'm pretty sure we'll, we'll have a fight with Senkaku. But... Okay, one thing... I, I can see one thing happening. Since Saito is here, like, they might do this. Like, you know, uh, Genshin will probably... If Shishu is still here, Genshin will probably like you know square off against shishio while senkaku will probably be dealt with saito uh, dealt by saito and so maybe that's why like saito is here we'll see I'm, I'm i'm still not really sure if they're going to like like he's going to confront shishio this early because it seems it's bit, it's, it seems a bit too early you know because uh shishio seems like the you know, like the, the, the last boss kind of character, him just immediately coming and confronting Genshin this early is a bit, is a bit unusual. So, you know, we'll see. 
But if he confronts him, then it's that's probably what's going to happen. Kenshin will confront him, while Saito will confront Senkaku. Um, right. So there you go. And that was what, you know, happened in today's episode. Um, obviously, uh, Misao still has no idea, like, what happened to Odaoni Oban and uh, Aoshi. Like, Aoshi is fine. Like, not fine, I guess, because he's just completely, like, you know, like... In his revenge, like you know, thing. Uh, but yeah, the other Onibaban member just, you know, it's just sad because the thing is that she's so confident that they're okay. Like, she's like, like, you know, it's not that it never crossed her mind that maybe something happened to them, but you see, they hear in that, in that particular section, she was like, oh, they're fine, completely okay. No, nothing must have happened. They're strong. In no way has anything happened to them. So that makes it even more sadder because, you know, like the fact that she's so like confident about the fact that everyone is okay, while in reality, that's not really the case, you know, yeah, like when he, she'll know, when she'll get to know what has happened to them, oh boy, uh, well, let's, let's see. Um, wait a minute, was there anything else I needed to discuss today? Um, no, uh, that was it, yeah. Okay, the battle will happen in the next episode, probably. And the fact that Saito is here also, you know, it's, it's good. Well, at least we have a backup, you know. And, uh, yeah. Right. Oh, um, I, I don't know. I feel like Misa will need to, like, I don't know. Like, she, she'll need to get better at her. Like, she, she is, like, you know, obviously, she's very fast. She's strong. She's swift. But I think, like, when you're, like, confronted by people who actually want to harm you, that is, like, completely different. You need, like, a separate set of experience for that. And that's what we saw today here. You saw, like, you know, how... Even like a random ordinary foot soldier was almost able to uh, harm Misao. And if, you know, like, um, Saito wasn't there, then that would have been a problem. Like, like this, this is the thing, like, you know, like, this is why you, like, need, like, first-hand experience about everything. Like, you, you learn about something just from theoretical, like, you know, like, thing and practice it on your own. You know, it's all well and good. But then when you're in the situation, like, it seems like everything's just gone from your head. Like, everything that you've learned and everything is of no use. So, you know, that kind of thing. So if you get, like, first-hand hands-on experience, that is way, way more important than just learning everything theoretically or practicing on your own. Like, you know, that kind of thing. Um, because... In your head, you're like, oh, I know these kind of things, I can do all of this. And you're like, in your head, you, you, you kind of simulate like, oh, if this happens, I'm going to do this. If this happens, I'm going to do this. But then when you're on the field and that exact same thing happens, it doesn't work. You know, that, that sort of thing. And even though she's strong, it's, you know, yeah, she, she'll need to improve, I guess. And I feel like this is probably like this experience that she'll be having now will probably make her a lot more prepared for the future um yeah because i don't think she's the type of girl to just stay somewhere and just wait she'll probably just keep sticking around with kenshin unless and until she gets to know more information about aoshi oh also another thing saito knows about aoshi so you know the fact that Saito is here, I don't know, I, I, I'm, I'm getting the feeling that there's a possibility that she might ask Saito something about Aoshi and Saito will just tell her because Saito doesn't care, <laughs> you know, like how Kenshin is trying to keep it as, like, you know, secret so that it doesn't affect her. I don't think Saito cares. Saito will just tell her, she, she'll be like, yeah, oh, he, he just, he was trying to kill Kenshin, you know, <laughs> or who knows, maybe not, I'm not really sure, but uh, the fact that Saito is here, I, I don't know. I feel like it'll be a problem if she actually asks Saito about Aoshi. But that'll happen probably later. For now, we're like in the middle of a battle. I doubt any of that will happen now.
but you know that's a problem for for the future i think um we'll we'll see and now that saito is here um i'm guessing saito will join kenshin together on their journey or maybe he'll separate <laughs> saito doesn't seem like a person <laughs> you know who who goes along with like you know like some he, he seems like like a more of a lone wolf type of character you know so <laughs> Well, you know what? We'll see. Those uh, those will probably happen way later. For now, we'll have to deal with this situation in front of us uh, with um, what was his name? Senkaku, yeah, Senkaku and Shishio. Right. There you go. And that was today's episode. That was my overall impressions of today's episode. Now, let me talk about this episode scene by scene. In the very first scene. You can see that uh, Kenshin, you know, we, we, we resume from the part where we left off. Kenshin's there and when she, he gets to know, like, list, like, hear Aoshi's name from, from the girl. Okay, you know what? Let me just double check. Her name is Misao, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, Misao, okay. Um, so, when she gets to, uh, when he gets to hear Aoshi's name from Misao, he kind of reacts at which Misao's like, wait, you know, you know Lord Aoshi? But, you know, like, Kenshin doesn't speak about it from that point onwards. So he, he just didn't say anything and left. Obviously, for Misao, as she says, this is the only lead she has found after so long. So she's not going to let this go. Because, you know, up until now, she's been trying to find Aoshi and, you know, Aoshi is like the leader of Onyaban. It's pretty damn difficult, I'm assuming, to drag down a ninja, you know, a shinobi, a group of highly trained shinobi. It's pretty damn difficult to drag them down. You, you can ask people, nobody will know. <laughs> so, you know, this is like the, for probably the first and the last lead he, she'll ever get about Aoshi. And she's not going to let this go. So she just keeps following Kenshin. And you know, Kenshin's just walking and he, she's trying, like calling Kenshin names and everything. Kenshin's just ignoring him, her. And Kenshin's like, call me with my name, I'm, I'm Kenshin, Himura Kenshin. She's like, oh, if I call you by, my, by your name, will you, will you tell me where they are? <laughs> He's like, no. Right. Keeps walking, keeps walking. And uh, you can see like, even she's getting tired. Kenshin's not like batting an eyelid. He's just walking. And, uh, you know, but Misao's not giving up. So... Kenshin is like, what should I do? Because Kenshin also knows the dangers of someone following him in a situation like this. You know, Shishu literally has all his men just completely like spying on him, keeping an eye on him. Who knows when some attack will come from a random tree? You know, like probably someone's just hiding in some random tree trying to attack Kenshin. That might happen and she might get uh, involved in that crossfire. Um, so Kenshin is like, I cannot let this continue should i just tell her or and it's, it's true like you know she was he was thinking should i just tell her but then he's like no if i tell her that will probably make her even more like adamant in following me and trying to like you know like yeah so he's like you know what i'll just i'll just run <laughs> i'll just like you know like actually try to get away from her he starts running Misao's like, oh, like, I've been trained by Lord Aoshi. You think you can, you can run away from me? <laughs> Kenshin's already just half a kilometer away, just there, <laughs> running. Um, anyways, Misao tries to follow him, and uh, yeah, this is the part where, you know, like, Kenshin just jumps over, like, a huge distance, like a, kind of like a creek, like a ravine or something like that, and it's like a huge distance. In no way, someone without proper training or experience can jump that high, not even Misao. Um, so he's like, yeah, that's it, go home. You know, like, like I'm, I'm, where I'm going is very dangerous, so. Yeah, this is why Kenshin says that, where's that part? Yeah, go back to Kyoto. He says like, I don't know what circumstances, you know, like how she left you, but I'm pretty sure I understand why he went on his own journey because he didn't want anything to happen to you that's why he left him uh, left you with that grandfather your grandfather or you know like that that old man um so knowing that i cannot allow you to continue in the journey you know like you must think about how he feels they're always in danger how she understood that 
so left you with the old man in Kyoto. Okay, where's that part where he says that it's for your happiness? Here we go. It is best to harden your heart and to forget. That is for your own happiness. Now, this is the part where, you know, Misao, like, Genshin thinks that Misao's leaving, but I was like, oh no, she's not leaving. She's just taking like a long run up, you know, so that she can run and jump. Yeah, that was exactly what she was doing. She goes back quite a distance and then she turns back towards Genshin and she's like, what the hell are you saying? You know, like, don't be like talking about this as if you know what I'm feeling. You think leaving someone that I love is for my own happiness, just staying somewhere without worrying about them. And, you know, um, that is not for my happiness. And who are you the one to dictate what my happiness is? Hey, what do you mean that you forget? I've been searching because I cannot forget. Exactly. How does forgetting the person I love lead to happiness? And obviously that holds true for Kaoru as well. Because, you know, Kenshin did the same thing with Kaoru as well. And, you know, yeah. But here's the thing. Like, what can I say? I can... You know, I can understand, like, it's pretty obvious, like, Kenshin doesn't want, like, especially Kaoru, because Kaoru probably has no experience in these type of, like, you know, like, long journeys and being ambushed by enemies. She's, she's a good source, you know, like, she has good swordsmanship, and she, she you know, you know, she's well-trained. Again, like I said, but that doesn't mean she can take care of situations like this on the road. If someone like ambushes her, she has nothing she can do about it. Um, similar with Misao. So, you know, I can understand Kenshin's point. But at the same time, what can I say? Like, as Misao says, you cannot dictate what I feel and what I want to do. So, you know, this is like a situation where neither of the party is wrong. Each are doing their own thing because they care about the other. And you cannot really say that, oh, you are wrong, or you are wrong. It's not, you know, yeah, that kind of thing. So, uh, anyways, but Misao just jumps. And obviously, in no way is she making that jump. That's like a huge distance. But she actually went quite far, you know, like, like almost there. Kenshin jumps down and grabs her and saves her. I actually thought Kenshin broke his leg or something. The way his foot was like to this just kind of goes like this i'm like oh my god is this <laughs> is that it for his leg is it broken uh, but no he just he just you know kind of cushioned it and jumped up higher up and just you know jumped like a ninja and easily could cross that distance yeah yeah and this is where misao was even though like she was almost unconscious this is where misao was like like, I, I know that he is not an ordinary person, Kenshin. He must have fought and fought Aoshi, but in no way can Lord Aoshi lose. I'm sure everything is fine. This is where she convinces herself that, oh, everyone is okay. In no way anything has happened to the Oni Um Yeah, and that is what I was saying. This makes it even sadder because the fact that she's so confident that everything is okay. When, you know, when the news will break to her what happened to the Oni that'll be painful because, you know, yeah okay right and there you go that was that so kenshin saved her and then kenshin when he she wakes up kenshin's like you know what <sighs> want to follow me if you want to follow me follow me but keep a distance because i might be attacked you know so just keep a distance and make you know act as if you don't know me <laughs> right so the journey continues and then we see sanosuke just breaking trees and i'm like bro what why are you destroying trees because of your training or whatever you're doing here? <laughs> Even he acknowledges it. He's like, what am I doing? Why am I destroying trees? <laughs> the trees have done nothing wrong. Anyways, also, he's lost. So, you know, he has his compass with him, but he's like, he's like, oh, I was walking through the road. Now, suddenly I'm in a forest and I don't know where to go. He's lost. <laughs> you know, he'll probably keep like roaming around the forest for a little while and then maybe he'll find his way again i don't know <laughs> but yeah he's lost <laughs> anyways and then we have megumi concerned about kenshin she's so concerned she's like burning camphor on top of this guy's head 
I'm pretty sure that's camphor. Um, <laughs> right, and you can see the doctor is very concerned about Megumi. She's just like not in her element at all. She's constantly like worrying about Kenshin and you know just staying there waiting. Um, right, and then we see Kaoru and Yahiko. Yahiko seasick. Kaoru's also seasick, but Kaoru's like I'm fine. You know I can I can deal with it. Um, yeah. There you go. So that's what's happening. Now, back to Kenshin and Misao again. Kenshin is moving. Misao is bothering Kenshin constantly. She's constantly calling him, you know, like, and just throwing stuff at him when she, he's ignoring her. <laughs> right. Okay, so she's like, come on, let's just take a rest. Let's just eat. But Kenshin's like, I'm fine. I'm hungry, but I can deal with it. And he's like, why don't you eat? I'm sure you have like some portable rations. And she's like, oh yeah, you're right. And she takes out like a sea biscuit, like ship biscuit or something. What does she call it? Something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, she's like, you know what? This is mine. You're not getting any. If you tell me about Aoshi, I can give. <laughs> Constantly bargaining with, you know, like. And Kenshi's like, it's okay. I can deal with it. <laughs> right. Okay, and she's like constantly talking about how she and oh, she like mentions here that Honey is the one who taught her like the fighting techniques, like like the the punches and everything that she throws. And Kenshin's just ignoring her, you know. And she tries to attack Kenshin again, but Kenshin is like, yeah, you know, <laughs> just easily dodges it. Okay. Yeah, and this is why she talks about Aoshi a little bit. She says like, you know, Aoshi is very smart he's very talented he's a genius not only that you know like he's usually like stone-faced and everything but you know deep down inside she, he cares about his um you know his friends which is true we've seen that he's he you know he's, he's he really cares about them that's why he's like going on this whole revenge thing uh, you know um right anyways and uh, so while he's she's talking about all this she also says like you know i've never seen him smile properly before but, you know, I do hope that someday he shows me his proper smile. Uh, and while all of this is going on, he's suddenly, he's suddenly like, she's suddenly like, wait a minute. Like, why are you walking so slow? Like, literally in the previous, you know, like, previous day, you were just zooming past everything. And now he's like, little by little walking, stomping the ground, breaking the branches. And he's like, oh, because, you know, like, you will be troubled otherwise, like, you know. Um, like he's used to it doesn't mean Misato, uh, Misao used to it that's why he's doing it so basically he's stomping the grass so that it you know obviously like when you're like walking through like a grassy place it like poses a resistance and you will get easily tired out at, at first you don't you know you, you don't really feel it but then little by little it it you know it kind of yeah um, so that's why also the branches you know so that it doesn't bother her and this is where Misao's like, oh, so that's why. And then she's like, so, you know, like, he is kind of like, oh, she, I can, I can get the same vibe from him as well. Um, so in the end, she decides to give Kenshin her food. And she's like, you know what? You're going to take the, my food, but only one, <laughs> not more than that. Kenshin's concerned that she's like lacing it with some kind of like <laughs> something, maybe laxatives or something. I don't know. Is concerned anyways this whole thing gets interrupted when there's some kind of a noise and Kenshin like goes there and finds this guy dying with his kid brother with him and he tells that you know please save us from the Shishio clan and then he passes away yeah so their village it is like a 50 or so people not a big village but Shishio clan has come and they are bothering them for two years continually um right when his brother wakes up his you know elder brother has passed away and he's like i have to go back to the village i'll have to protect my parents you know and he tells kenshin everything like what has happened two years ago um you know like shishio's one of shishio's main came here took control of the village the police officer that was here they killed him and then from that point onwards more the more and more police officers they sent here the more and more they just kill them eventually and uh now they've just abandoned us. Misao's like, surely not. Like, maybe they're like, you know, gathering their forces or something. Nope. 
they got a map and in the map their village is literally erased so that is pretty obvious that they're just abandoning them you know and he's like i'll have to go there and do something i cannot let this go on genshin is like let me do it on your behalf i am going to kyoto to deal with shisho so perfect opportunity you know i'll i'll deal with it i'll i'll help your village um right yeah and they come in and the first thing uh, obviously kenshin tells them to stay back but they just follow him uh, and uh, you know uh, the first thing that they see is two people being <sighs> strung you know like in front of the village uh, yeah and it's the it's his parents and he loses his mind he screams and obviously alerts everyone and these guys come in at first i was like this dude you know the dude who comes out i was like wait this is this is uh wait what was his name senkaku yeah i'm like this is senkaku because you know in the silhouette we saw he was quite muscular he did this guy looks like a <laughs> you know in no way this is this guy any like far muscular like at least the silhouette that we saw no he, he's just some some dude you know probably like a like a vice lieutenant or something of you know his group or something like that maybe like a vice 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 captain or something um yeah this is not senkaku so he keeps you know like just saying nonsense and he's like oh like we're doing these guys a favor you know this and that everything is like lord shishio is going to all life all matters of life and death is on shishio you know all those random bullcrap he's just spewing and then he just tries to attack kenshin kenshin gives him permanent stomach damage you know just <laughs> wax his stomach with his um sakabato yeah and, and, and like i said this is the same thing with all the like you know like the the lackeys in the you know the villain lackeys in anime they see something like this and they learn nothing from it they still try to attack the guy who did all of this to him all these guys they're like oh this is, you pay for this and they try to go and attack kenshin he just starts whacking out everyone you know and uh, and this is where you can see i was kind of thinking i was like it'll be very dangerous if one of these guys goes and attacks misao and that kid and that's exactly what happened one of those guys went there and tries to kill you know attack her misao does save the kid and you know kind of take a distance she did dodge the attack but i was you know like she tries to throw the kunai but i was pretty sure like it's not going to help because again experience you know like she doesn't have hands on experience in these type of situations or at least i think she doesn't have any hands on i don't think she has actually she's trained but she's not really faced situations like this you know so even a normal random foot soldier can do anything to her in a situation like that and also the fact that she's literally trying to protect someone is a hostage like you know like a like a protecting like someone situation it was her on her own she could probably just run away or something she cannot do that with the kid there you know so that was a dangerous situation however you know kenshin uh not kenshin saito comes in and saves them just a second okay i'm back so yeah where was i um yeah so uh, saito comes in and you know defeats that guy kills him and that's where it ended so you know uh he says in the end he he's like what is kenshin doing here like you know like he's he should be focusing on his mission but you know this is kenshin and i think like you know if he gets to know that shishu is here she, he'll probably change his mind we'll see that's where it ended so let's see how this goes so that is it that was my reaction to episode number 3 of ronin kenshin season 2 if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know i'll check them out that is it thank you for watching and i'll see you guys um next week with another episode of Roni Kenshin until then goodbye and have a nice day